Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, Sky High. Starring Sid Caesar, with Mary McCarty, Imogene Coker, Marge and Gower Champion, Roy Atwell, Clifford Guest, Sidney Smith, Frank Milano, Tom Mavera, Kenneth Ramo, Ronnie Cunningham, Charles Sanford and his orchestra, produced and directed by Max Leibman. Ring up the curtain! <laughs> to you. It's time for your Admiral Review. To make each Friday sweeter than a honeycomb, we try to bring Broadway right into your home. The top entertainment for you. A topical musical that's new. But just before we clear the floor and ring up the curtain, we'd like to be certain you know where to shop. Admiral is wonderful at most in all, but the quality's always the top. The Dynamagic Radio Phonograph, the modern Admiral Electric Range. Go out and treat your sweet to a dual temp refrigerator. You'll get a kiss in exchange. The top of the evening to you. And now it's time to present the first scene. So keep your eye on your Admiral screen. The Admiral Broadway Review this week with a happy time of song, dance, and comedy brings you Sky High, the Radio City Review. place where New Yorkers all get together. Anytime it's skating weather, they can be found going round and around to the Radio City. Skaters waltz, prominent social lights, you will find them with their show food right behind them. Little girls come to, they skate and chew gum to the Radio City. Skaters waltz, the young and the old here wear a smile upon their faces. A timid and bold here, little ladies in laces kick over their traces. Busy executives, imitating, male poets, keep creating, little boys hollering, look, ma, I'm skating to Radio City, skaters walk.
City, the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth wonder of the world. Here you'll find concentrated in one half acre of New York City real estate everything your heart desires. You can buy an airplane, mail a postcard, see an exhibit of scientific marvels, or drink a malted milk. You can have performed upon you the miracle of plastic surgery, or you can get a massage right here within the confines of these few square blocks. And now if you'll come along with me, we'll visit a typical radio broadcasting studio. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Station PDQ, Network PDQ, High Fidelity PDQ, FM PDQ, servicing the USA PDQ. Here we have all the ingredients for a top-notch radio show. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an announcer. Ah! Please do not touch feed or annoy the animals. Now, if you'll step over this way, we'll take a look at a typical sound effects man. This is the gentleman who lends all the magic and illusion to radio. He's the man who brings you the roar of the sea, the tweet of the dicky bird, the boom of the cannon, and the spritz of a seltzer bottle. Now, down here, we have Joe Jane, Diana, Mary McCarty, Bickens, the famous Tennessee thrush who croons you to sleep in the morning and lullabies you into restlessness at night. <laughs> and down here, we have the wielder of the baton, melancholy Mo, and his ten dismal friends. And way up there, hermetically sealed under glass, in a fireproof padded cubicle, is the sponsor. <laughs> Unable to do any harm should he suddenly go stark staring mad. And now, if you'll file down to your seats in the auditorium, we'll witness a real live radio broadcast. Take it away, PDQ! <laughs> <laughs> yes, folks, you're going to see and hear a real broadcast. We are presenting the Joe Jane Diana Mary McCarty Bicken Show, and you will have an opportunity first to hear the number one hit parade song just as it will be sung here in the studio, and then as it will be heard over this network before millions of people. We are not on the air at this time, but when that red light is on, the magic of radio is in full progress. Ha <laughs> ha! Aren't we wonderful? Remember, you will hear the song first as it will be sung in the studio, and then you will hear the song as it will be heard in a typical broadcast. And now meet the star of our show, Miss Joe. Oh, Jane, Diana, Mary McCarty, Pickens. Oh, will you never let me be? Oh, will you never set me free? The ties that bound us are still around us. There's no escape that I can see. And still these little things remain They bring me happiness or pain A cigarette that bears some lipstick traces An airline ticket to romantic places And yet my heart has wings These foolish things remind me of you A tinkling piano in the next apartment Those stumbling words that told you what my heart meant A fairground's painted swings These foolish things remind me of you How strange, how sweet I love you still These things are dear to me Somehow they bring you near to me The winds of March that made my heart a dancer A telephone that rings for who's to answer Miss Dickens. A 
And now, folks, the great moment has arrived. You are going to hear the same song just as it will be heard in the broadcast. A cigarette. And when you think of cigarettes, Testerfields is the kind that satisfy. That bears the lipstick traces. Helena Krubenstein has that glamour lipstick that makes you look younger. An airline ticket. Western Airlines gets you there faster and safer. Fly by Western. To romantic places. For a vacation full of thrills and romance, go to Hot Sulphur Springs. And yet my heart has wings. When your heart has wings, fly to Bimble's Basement for bargains. <laughs> These foolish things remind me of you. A tinkling piano. A fine way piano is the instrument of the immortals. A tinkle on a fine way has more music than a symphony. No other piano can make this statement. In the next apartment. Zing and Zing Real Estate has just the apartment for you. Two rooms, $600 per month. Available, 1959. Those stumbling words that told you what my heart meant. A blue white diamond ring. A Biffany's will sell you a blue white diamond for more money than anyone else. These foolish things remind me of you. You came, you saw, you conquered me. And why did you conquer her? Because you were wearing a Bart Hefner and Schmark suit with a Radham's hat to match. When you did that to me, I knew somehow it had to be. A march wind helped to make my heart a dancer. For the latest dance steps of samba and conga, why don't you go to Madame Lazanga? A telephone. Tell and Tell Telephone will give you best service at minimum cost. Orders taken seven years in advance. That rings. But who's to answer? Well, Tell Answer Service will answer and take your messages morning, noon, and night. Oh, how the ghost of you cling. You let Cramble's funeral parlor put you to rest, and you'll never become a ghost. These foolish things remind me of you. Once in a while, when the pace of New York gets just a little bit too hectic, I find that my favorite spot is right here on these steps overlooking Fifth Avenue. The steady stream of people rushing out of and past Radio City thins out somewhat. And New York seems to run down a bit and relax for a change. Just a few days ago, on these same steps overlooking Fifth Avenue, a strange thing happened. As I stood here, in the shadow of the old church, I noticed, wandering along in the gathering darkness, a young girl, alone. She might have been a French girl. Over her shoulder, she wore a Basque shawl. Under her arm, she carried an artist's portfolio. And what made me notice her particularly was the way she would stop for a moment and stare at people, as though searching perhaps for someone to paint. Or perhaps she was just lonely and searching for a familiar face amongst the passers-by. As she reached the edge of the steps near me, she paused, looking up at the great towers of the buildings across Fifth Avenue. And as I watched her, I realized that she was listening to something, something far away, some strange music. And suddenly, in the magic of that spring evening in New York, well, I don't know if I imagined it or not, but as I saw her face light up with the music, I could swear that I heard it just as she heard it.
I don't know why he reminded me so strongly of Jean. Perhaps it was the way he held his cigarette, or the way he smoked it and shook the ash to the ground. I had not heard from Jean since that last night in Marseille before I sailed for America. I'm quite sure he did not see me, this young American. But as I watched him, I was reminded with terrible memory of Jean in his bright uniform. Jean making preparation for his own departure from Marseille. And Jean standing silent with me that last moment before we parted for opposite sides of the world. I could even hear, stronger than memory, the last music we heard together. Strangely, the American seemed to become Jean, dancing with me as we had danced together that last time. Our champion. gentlemen. My name is Clifford Guest and I'm, uh, I've just arrived from Australia, but don't hold that against me. <laughs> now you're probably wondering what this, uh, this suitcase is all about. Well, as a matter of fact, I... What's the idea? What's that? What's the idea? What's the idea? Oh, pardon me, we have trouble here. What do you mean, what's the idea? Trouble. Come on out and behave yourself. Ah, oh, not dead. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You don't mean that. No. That's better. Let me out first and then drop dead. That's enough, Lester. Come on, behave yourself. Well, what's the ice? That's enough. What? Well, keep quiet. Well, why should I keep quiet? Well, have a look round. Well, what's this thing, this joint? This, this, uh, this, uh, what, do you, what do you say? Oh! Well, what do you know? We've got customers. <laughs> what's the idea, guest? Every time you work with girls, you stick me in the docks. Well, I'm sorry, but you're too young for girls. <laughs> oh, he really thinks I'm a dummy. <laughs> they tell me, they tell me you're from Australia. That's right, sir, a foreigner. Yes, and you're still speaking, still speaking with an Australian accent. Is that what it is? <laughs> when you learn to speak American, so will I. Yes, <laughs> we'll have to get around with that. Toby, since you've been in this country, have you been around at all, had any fun? <laughs> oh, are you kidding? <laughs> it's my birthday, I guess. Your birthday? Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm ten. Ten? Ten years old? Yeah. Well, that's fine. Didn't get a present. No present? No. Ah, that's most unfortunate. Now, let me see. What uh, what can I give to a ten-year-old boy? Uh, found out a nine-year-old girl. <laughs> do you like the American girls? Do I like the American girls? I think they're terrific. You do? <laughs> yes. I know they do it. I really do. I think they're terrific. You certainly, you certainly have to hand it to them. <laughs> if you don't, they'll take it. <laughs> well, tell me, Lester, now that... Uh, now that we're here, what do you propose to do? Can you, uh, can you do anything at all? Oh, 
yes. I can throw my voice. Oh, you can throw your voice, can you? Splendid, a ventriloquist. You know, Lester, I've always wanted to hear a ventriloquist throw his voice. <laughs> really? Yes. Would you like to hear me? Yes, I would rather. But right now? Right now. All right, then. This is an echo. What's that? An echo. An echo. Yeah. I see. Interesting. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right now? Yes, right now. Pardon me. <coughs> Excuse me. I should think so. What's the younger you? You got a cold? No, not exactly a cold, a slight, uh, <clears throat> a slight throat. Thought my voice sounded funny. Hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Echo. Echo. Now you listen. I'm listening. Hello. Hello. That's pretty good. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you now? Where are you now? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I'll catch him this time, guest. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> now where are you? Now where are you? You over there? You over there? You over here? You over there? Are you down there? You down there? Well, where the, where are you? <laughs> Gets around this guy. Are you up there? Up there? Will you come right down? It's a gone guy. I said, will you come right down? Can't hear me. Can't. I said, would you like a drink? I'm coming right now. Oh, no. Will you come right down and count the stairs one by one as you come down? All right. I'm coming right down now. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. How about you, guest? Yes, I'm ready. Sneaks you all the time. I need a drink. A drink. I'll get you a glass of water. Where's that girl with the drink? Where is she? Uh oh. Here she is. Oh, well. Thank you very much. That's this uh, liquor. Cold tea. <laughs> <laughs> Keep quiet. What? Keep quiet. Shut up. Yes. <laughs> Keep your mind on the work. Yes, sir. How dry are we? Shh, that's enough. Let's behave yourself, will you? Uh uh. What's wrong? Not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, <laughs> well, now, Lester, I think it's time. So do I. I think it's time that I continue with my part of the act. You've got an act? Yes. Well, it's time you did something. <laughs> yes, I quite agree. So, back in the box. That, in that thing again. Could I stay up for a while? I'm sorry. Five minutes? I said I'm sorry. Uh, What's up? Speak up. Certainly not. No, no, I don't care. I don't care what you said. Put your feet down. Put your feet down, behave yourself. Put your feet down. What do you think? 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 What do you Yes, come on. Look, well, be careful. Look, just take it. Be careful. What you do? Don't, don't squeeze it. You squeeze it. My finger. <laughs> I'm not touching his finger. <laughs> well, take your finger away, you stupid boy. I don't want to take the finger away, and I don't want to go in the case. Well, you're going in the case. That's all about it. Now, come on, take your hand away. Well, let me get out of just a little while. I certainly would not. Will you please take your hand away? Look, I said. Most embarrassing. Most embarrassing. Lester, will you please take your hand away? 
You saucy young... Uh, uh, uh. Not on television. <laughs> oh, now, come on, take your hand away. Oh, let me come out of the just a little while. I certainly will not. Look, I'm done, you're squeezing me finger. Well, take your finger away, for goodness sake. Look, I'm... Take it easy, old man. It's always this way on the day a new picture opens. But I'm frightened, Captain. That mob down there. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. The tapes are up. The doors are tightly bolted. The Radio City Music Hall will be stoutly defended against the invaders. <laughs> Say, I've been on a dozen campaigns with General Breckenridge, and he'll see us through. I have complete confidence in the high command. New pictures, new pictures. Why can't we have peace? I could use a long furlough. Oh, easy, boy. You'll get used to it. Do you see these stripes? This is for the razor's edge offensive. This the forever ambush push. This the mother war tight's bulge. Gone with the wind, birth of a nation, ban her. All terrific fights against terrific odds. The enemy may outnumber us, but our morale is much higher. Oh, Sam. Yes, Irving? If I don't come back, will you take this letter to me, mother? <laughs> I know how you feel. Your first time under fire, but don't worry. General Breckenridge will see us through. Hello, Sacre Bleu, Jean-Louis Barreau, Louis Jouvet, Raymond Jean Cacto, Jean Gabin. What's the matter with him? A very bad case. Three years occupation duty in a foreign film house. This <laughs> uh, general headquarters? Yes, sir. Am I the commanding general? Yes, sir. We are lost. Captain <laughs> Randolph, call your men to attention. Up. Men, we are about to meet the foe. What is the password at one o'clock? <clears throat> Plenty of good seats in the orchestra. Good. At three o'clock. Plenty of good seats in the balcony. Good. At eight o'clock. There will be a short wait of three hours. <laughs> Even if the whole house is empty, what do you always say? Best seats in the last aisle over. <laughs> Best seats in the last aisle over. Very good. Captain, inspection of arms. Private Manelli. Very good. Private O'Halloran. Yes, indeed. Private Sweeney. Good, good, yes. Private Scherzinger. What is this? Who? Sabotage, I know. What? Ah, uh, defective ammunition. Here. <laughs> Lend lease from low state. General, the zero hour approaches. Zero, zero. Ah, oh, yes, zero. Men, men, I shall brief you briefly. We are about to engage an enemy that outnumbers us for the first time since bank night. Now, remember, when the first wave sweeps over us, we may lose the mezzanine, but we shall hold the orchestra pit. Understand? <laughs> and when we conquer, remember, no fraternizing. I want no walking arm in arm, no holding hands, and no smooching in the balcony. Now remember, when you go out there, go out there with the company's battle cry on your lips. Remember, Pearl White. Uh, what is this? I told you no more volunteers. This man's not a volunteer. He's a spy from Roxy. A spy? <laughs> We caught him putting seven up in the Coca-Cola machine. Oh! Spreading hatred. Breeding discontent, eh? Take him out in the alley and shoot him. Now wait! That's too good for him. I know. Tie him to a seat in the front row and let the rockets kick his brains out. <laughs> what do you do? Where was I? The zero hour, sir. Ah, oh, yes, zero hour. Zero hour. Men, this will be my plan of attack. Captain? Yes, sir? You will hold this sector as long as humanly possible, you understand? <laughs> Now, Lieutenant, yes, sir. when the going gets too tough, you will open up a second front in the mezzanine. Uh, uh, um, I myself will lead my commandos into the ladies' lounge. <laughs> and wipe out all resistance. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, remember, when we attack in five seconds, synchronize your watches. <clears throat> five, four, three, two... Ah! I can't stand anymore! I'm going mad! I took you mad, mad, mad! I knew this would happen. I knew it, Crack. I saw him barking back at Lassie, last picture. <laughs> What's the matter, my boy? Are you afraid? Oh, I'm not afraid, sir. It's just that I can't stand anymore. Seven days a week, five times a day, the same lousy pictures over and over and over. <laughs> I understand, my boy. I know. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. Ah, uh, you'll get used to it. I remember the days when I was a corporal. Ah, uh, in those days, you had to stand through silent pictures. Ah, uh, I remember... Mary Pickford and Rudolph Valentino.
Silent Westerns. And then, then came the big colossal spectacles, like the big parade. the talkies. You actually heard them talk from the screen. It was wonderful. <laughs> and then, finally, after years of pioneering, they got the best directors, the best producers, the best cameramen, the best salmon, the best playwrights, the best actors, and we got... Ah! Men! This is it. Or is it? Yes, it is. That's right. Good luck. Good luck. Men, I want you to go out there and fight. I want you to go out there and give it everything. I want you to go out there and fight for the company's honor. Remember Radio City Hall. And now, go out there and fight. And remember, don't give an inch. Go out there and fight. I'll stay here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Imogene Coker.
is the story of a kid he couldn't win, he had to lose. It's a tale that's as stale as the wail of the blues. But it made the daily headlines of the mirror and the news. The story of my miserable life. If you're near Columbus Circle, then you just direct your feet to the downtown subway station right on 57th Street. You walk down the steps, and the first one that you meet is the turnstile. He's a friend of mine. So he's getting pushed around for a measly dime. Soon you come to Fairbanks, the weighing machine. He's another friend of mine. He's always telling the truth and always getting stepped on. Well, you take a few more steps till you come to me. I'm the penny chewing gum machine. I'm a very honest, very sincere, very polite chewing gum machine. And I stand there in the subway, right up against the wall, all day and all night. And I keep saying, Come, sir. Come, ma'am. Come, ma'am. Come, sir. Come, ma'am. Come, sir. Come, ma'am. Come, ma'am. Yes, from what kind? Juicy fruit? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Call again. Gum? Gum, sir. Gum, ma'am. Gum? Gum, sir. Gum. Gum, sir. Yes, sir. What kind? Spearmint? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Call again. Gum? Gum, sir. Gum, ma'am. Gum? Gum, sir. Gum, ma'am. Gum. Gum. Oh, what's the matter, kid? You haven't got a penny? Just a second. Go ahead, kid, take <laughs> So long. Come, come, sir. Come, ma'am. Come, ma'am. Come, sir. Come, come. Oh, boy, here come the guys to fill me up. Gee, and just in time, I'm empty. Hey, fellas. Hey, fellas, I'm over here. I haven't got any gum. We please come on, fill me up now? I'm empty. Hey, fellas, I'm over here. I haven't got any gum. Will you please come on, fill me up now? I'm empty. Holy smoke, and here comes a customer. Hey, fellas! Hey, fellas, I got a customer coming. I haven't got any gum. Will you please come on, fill me up? <laughs> no, please, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm going to tell you I haven't got any gum. So please don't give me the penny. No, I'll tell you honestly, I haven't got any gum. So why give me the penny? I'll tell you I haven't got any gum. No, please don't give me the penny. I'm telling you I haven't got no, I won't take the penny. I'll tell you I haven't got any gum. Are you gonna give me the penny? I'll tell you I haven't got any I'll tell you I haven't got any gum. You oh! gave me the penny. I haven't got any gum, what am I gonna do? Hey fellas! I know. The only honest thing to do. I'll give him his penny back. There you are, sir. There's your penny back. No, please so don't give me the penny. I told you I haven't got any gum. What are you gonna give me the penny? <laughs> He hit me. <laughs> Gee, what for? I didn't do nothing wrong. I just tried to give him his penny back. He beats me up. How do you like that? Well, I'm through being a sucker. Sure, you turn style, you can stand and get pushed around. You, Fairbanks, you can get stepped on, but not me. I'm finished. From now on, I'll give him the same date they give me. Sure, why not? Doesn't pay off, to be honest, anymore. Well, here they come to fill me up. You're a little late, don't you think? <laughs> Take it easy back there. And don't mix the spearmint with the juicy fruit like you did before. <laughs> so long. Be honest and polite. Give them that penny back. I'll show them. Hey, over there. You want gum there? What do you say there, boy? Are you? <laughs> hey, you there with the big hat. You want gum? You way? Come show what kind you want. Juicy fruit? Sure. No gum? Sue me. <laughs> so long, sir. Ahead. That's the way it went on. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Plenty of pennies. But not one stick of gum. <laughs> and finally, one day, the big boys came down and they opened me up. And they saw all those pennies and not one stick of gum missing. They said, hey, this kid's got talent. <laughs> We're wasting him on this penny anti stuff. Send him up town. Make him a slot machine. A quarter slot machine. So there I was, in the big gambling palace. My shiny chrome front, my cherries, my bells, my plums, in lots of lemons. <laughs> ah, this is the life. Nice, easy work. Don't get pushed around. Oh, hello, kid. You're the new nickel machine, eh? <laughs> How do you do? Glad to have you with us. What's that? How do you get to be a quarter machine? <laughs> Psychology. <laughs> Got to know your customers. Want to pay off or not to pay off? Watch, I'll show you. Psst. Psst. 
Hey, buddy. Yeah, you. Come here. Come here. Watch this. Look, I wouldn't do this for anybody else. But you look like a nice guy. I like you. Saw you when you came in. Said right away, nice fella. So I'm going to give you a little tip. I'm loaded. I got to pay off. I can't hold it any longer. Get your change over there. You watching, kid? Take notes. Shall we? Shall we, sir? Come on, try it again. It's a game of chance, skill, sportsmanship. Hey, what? Nah. <laughs> now, I, not so long. <laughs> He'll be back. Back so soon? Try it again? Surely, sir. I couldn't help it. The boss was looking. You know I can't pay off when the boss is looking. Watch me give this guy a fair shuffle. Hey, buddy, look. The boss is not looking, and there's three bells coming up. Look, who should know better? I'm the... <laughs> Holy smokes. It's a raid. Here, the cops. Oh, no. No, please, cop, don't hit me with the axe, eh? No, please, cop, don't hit me with the axe, eh? No, 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 don't, don't, don't! <laughs> I was a good kid. I just got on the wrong track, that's all. That's the story of my life, and it's no story for the screen. It will wind up in the basket of True Story magazine. But I hope it teaches people never to be mean to a penny chewing gum machine. in the ballet at the music hall. Now at last I'm in the cast of the greatest show of all. There's a line up around the block every single day there. They all come to see me do my tour to take their mind. Job can ever pause at the music hall. Love to sing in the glee club at the music hall. Fifty guys who harmonize in the greatest show of all. Ten of are tall and basses, all are tall and sturdy, singing any music. Nature boy to birdie, no, there is nothing small about the music hall. City Music Hall presents...
要照样，照样穿的话，哎呀哎呀，哎哎哎哎哎，我照样照，照嘛也照样，照也冇错，哎，照你出去用嘛也照样，看到没有？他出去我要不用，他出去我要不用，他用照也照，他用照也照，他，他他用手中，他用中，他他用他用他，他手中，他也他呀，他用照样嘛，他用，他中用不用，他用。啊！坐拥快刀打影晒啊！坐拥咪啊！咪喐坐拥，拍刀都咪喐。再喐咪喐，再喐再喐。我有三样，三样，三样，咪嗰种齐啊！齐样，齐样，三样，八样，三样，齐啊，齐样。齐样，咪齐样，咪齐样，齐样，齐样啊！你们采用采用个采用采用，采用所有人，采用个镜头又唔用，采用整个摄像又唔采用，所以采用乜嘢用？采用电脑嘢，整一用整，整一唔使用，采用不用？采用所有，采用不用？采用不用？采用一定要采用文采用采采用啦，采用一条，采用采用，采用采用，采用手，采用。哎呀，不要问。
we make for you. The clock tells us that we're nearly through. We hope we made a little bit of Broadway zoo. Right over the footlights and into your room. Your Admiral Dealer extends a fond invitation to his friend. Be back again next Friday when it's Admiral Showtime. We'll rip up in no time a brand new review. Be with us again, same time, same channel next Friday night when your Admiral Dealer, the man to see for shows and refrigerators, electric ranges, radios, record players, and magic mirror television, bring you another star-studded Admiral Broadway.